What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in live on the stream here. Uh, it is April 5th, 2021 to date, uh, just about 1 p.m. West Coast time here in California, where things are still kind of shaking up down there in the Southland, right around the Los Angeles area. We're looking at about 66 earthquakes or so, uh, right around the uh, Inglewood area, right around, uh, like I said, this area of, of uh, Los Angeles, pretty... Uh, Pretty complex when it comes to fault systems here we didn't really look at the fault systems on my previous updated videos uh, but we are looking at uh, a couple different fault structures that this is pretty close if not smack right dab on of course the san andreas fault system is this major plate boundary here in this dark red line uh, indicating that plate boundary between the north american plate to the east and the pacific plate to the west of course, a lot of pressure has been built up in this region along the Sleeping Giant. Uh, this is going to be the area where the big one is going to hit. Uh, is the big one going to hit today? I don't know. But we are taking a look at the Inglewood, Newport Inglewood fault system that this uh, all this earthquake activity is taking place on. Yes, the San Andreas Fault is capable of producing a 8.0 or greater and can do tremendous damage. But... Uh, there's also some concern about the uh, Newport Inglewood fault structure, which is right here, right? You can see it kind of running through uh, the region there. That's closest, just about closest, if not right smack dab on that fault system. You guys can see it's this little red line, a little bit, uh, kind of looks like maybe a road, but it runs from right up about up here, uh, stretches down to about the end of this activity here. And most of the activity <clears throat> is deep. And it looks like it's getting deeper. Uh, you can see 20 to 21 kilometers below surface for a lot of this activity. As we go back uh, throughout the hours, um, it's still remaining fairly deep. And this is a little concerning here, folks. I did a little, uh, little uh, snooping around on the internet. You can find all sorts of information on fault structures out there. But like I said in many videos, California, Southern California specifically, is a spider web of complex fault systems, right? Many of them just very capable of producing a 4 or 5.0 magnitude quake. But this one, very capable of producing a mid-7 magnitude range earthquake. And for that to happen on this fault system with the amount of people that's out here, uh, could actually be worse for the LA area compared to even the San Andreas Fault going there with the big one. Of course, the San Andreas Fault does sit over here a ways. But a 7.0, 7.5 a magnitude quake on this structure, uh, very capable of producing some significant major damage. Uh, here's a little article on Wikipedia. I'll leave a link in the video description below so you can go check it out yourself. It's uh, talking about the Inglewood Newport fault structure. Uh, a little bit of tech information. It is a right lateral strike slip fault in Southern California. And the fault extends for about 47 miles, 76 kilometers from Culver City, southeast uh, through Inglewood and other uh, coastal communities to the uh, uh, Newport Beach, at which point the fault extends east, southeast into the Pacific Ocean uh, and is known as the Rose Canyon Fault. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of information on this on this little area right here folks and and what kind of popped up here when i seen this i was like oh man this this isn't good okay the fault has a slip rate of approximately oh 0 0.02 inches a year which isn't a lot uh, but these folks are indicating that's very capable of producing a 6.0 to 7.4 magnitude earthquake a uh, 2017 study concluded that the newport inglewood fault and rose canyon fault could produce a 7.3 or 7.4 magnitude quake. We'll go back over here and see this specific fault structure that it's occurring on. The Newport Inglewood Rose Canyon Fault. Uh, the fault was first identified after a 4.9 magnitude quake struck near Inglewood back on uh, June 21st, 1920. So it's been some time. Uh, due to the lack of earthquake resistant construction, uh, this quake caused considerable damage in the Inglewood area and was a preview of what was to come almost 13 years later. The Long Beach earthquake occurred back in March 10th, uh, 1933 uh, with a magnitude 6.3. Uh, 
Uh, and then, of course, you had the uh, 1906 earthquake. The Newport Inglewood Fault is part of a larger system of right lateral strike slip faults, most uh, prominently the San Andreas Fault, which, comp uh, which compromised the transform zone, which separates the North American tectonic plate from the Pacific, as mentioned. In 2015, a University of California at Santa Barbara a professor reported that uh, helium-3 was leaking naturally from oil wells up to, uh, looks like 1.8 miles deep along a 30-mile stretch from Los Angeles west side to Newport Beach, suggesting that the fault runs deep, though not necessarily changing the outlook of the earthquake there. So we're looking at, you know, the deep the deep facts there are, are con concluded, I should say, um, in all of these earthquakes that we're seeing right now. It's worthy to note, folks, that the amount of swarming that's going on here um, is, is concerning, to say the least. Um, I haven't seen it really die down. I mean, we're looking at, well, at least within the last hour, what do we got? One circle there? But we're still looking at 60, uh, 67 earthquakes so far in the last 24 hours. It's, uh, and it's centered right around the uh, Inglewood area right there. Highly, highly populated area. Los Angeles Airport, International Airport, sits just to the west by a couple thousand feet, if that. Imagine a 7.4 magnitude quake here striking this region. Um, like I said, it could be more considerable damage just on this fault zone um, compared to an 8.0 over here. Yes, it's, it's a distance, but um, and it's still going to shake things up in Los Angeles, but a 7.5 right, right smack dab in, in this area would be uh, uh, not good. I'm telling you what, it would not be good at all, folks. So um, just a little bit of tech info on that fault structure there. There's many other faults, fault zones um, in the region. Uh, most of them do run parallel, similar to the, uh, uh, the San Andreas fault system. Looking at that today. Uh, just covering that real quick. There is a couple small quakes, microquakes, right smack dab on it. Uh, right smack dab on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, the locked section. That's, uh, you know, where that big one's going to occur. Of course, Beaumont. Thank you for correcting me there uh, on uh, quite a few folks there. I couldn't get I couldn't get back to everyone on the uh, pronunciation of this. I said Beaumont. Beaumont, not for sure why, but I guess it's Beaumont region. Um, anyway, thanks for correcting me. Um, there was a couple, like I said, a couple earthquakes there, 3.4 being the largest within that region, which sits just, you know, a couple miles from the Sandris fault. Um, and it's, uh, most of the activity, there's just, a, I tell you what, folks, it's just all concerning with, with the activity, not only along the Sandris fault. But also up here along the Garlock Fault structure, we're seeing some uh, movement on that shear fault uh, system up here called, called the Garlock Fault. Uh, Cover that system quite a bit. Even that area is capable of producing some big size uh, quakes there. But this area and the amount of swarming that's going on on a uh, recently studied fault system that's capable of producing the 7.4, 7. Uh, 7.5 quake, we, uh, we need to... Pay attention. Be very vigilant uh, today. If you got family down there, uh, I'd be vigilant over the next couple days. You know, it could be uh, it could be swarming today. Might have a little break later tonight, and then tomorrow the big one hits down there. You know, and that's it. Doesn't take a lot. A 7.0 earthquake right smack dab underneath the city would uh, not be good. And hopefully the depth would be. Uh, not not shallower. We would want the depth of that earthquake to be as deep as possible to prevent uh, damage there at the surface. But so far, the majority of these quakes we're looking at have been relatively deep, really deep, uh, in my book. So 23 kilometers. Um, you know, it's just I'm I'm used to seeing earthquakes here within this zone, about five seven kilometers uh, below the surface on any given fault structure out here. But the amount of deep earthquakes there right smack dab around the L.A. area is uh, worthy to note, folks. you got to be prepared. Be alert. Stay on guard. Um, I did mention in my last video about the uh, um, Shake program, the early alert earthquake app that you can get from uh, either Apple Store or, or um, 
uh, whatever apps you use on your phone, whether it's Google or uh, Windows, it's called, uh, I believe you just go to the App Store, type in Early Alert, and you should see the app that uh, I, I haven't really worked, it hasn't worked with me. Of course, I haven't been around any significant earthquakes to really test it out, but it's a good idea to have that potentially on your phone if you are in this area of Southern California. It's supposed to give you a couple couple seconds alert you know it may be four or five seconds but that's enough to uh you know let it sink in your mind real quick and either get out of the house or um you know do something it could you know it, <clears throat> it could save some lives so i would suggest highly that you do download that app uh, early alert shake uh, early alert shake app um, and just type it into google you can find it too just type in uh, early alert earthquake app there's a couple of them make sure you get the uh, legit one not you know from some local developer that's just you know testing out his own theory uh, get the one that's got uh, downloaded a lot of, a lot of times millions of times uh, and it's got apparently it's got some good reviews on it it's worked for some folks down there in Mexico uh, when they when they had that bigger quake down there last year or the year before I can't remember uh, but it does uh, it does work apparently a little bit of further movement up here towards the Cascadia, kind of monitoring that activity for further movement. We had seen quite a few fours up here along the southern end of the Cascadia. Of course, Trimmer map uh, is still uh, pretty uh, pretty active. Uh, yesterday's map still showed quite a bit of movement in the Northern California at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, day six of Trimmer. And as I mentioned, well over 3,000 epicenters of Trimmer which means um, some significant buildup of pressure and movement in this region. So be on guard, folks. Um, just you know, pay attention to what's going on. The best thing you could do is get that app, get any earthquake app, you know. But the early the uh, early warning one is kind of a good thing to have. I have three or four earthquake apps on my phone. I've seen quite a few comments, people saying that there's a, you know, they have five or six of them. <laughs> it's just either way. Uh, good to have that on your phone, either through you know the app itself or text messages. Um, you know, emails sometimes can take a little while to get there, but uh, I would suggest you know getting that app for sure, folks. Once again, just be on guard. Potential for 7.4, 7.5 magnitude quake in this heightened area of earthquake activity along the Inglewood, Newport Inglewood, Rose Canyon Fault Zone, the North Los Angeles Basin section here. Um, uh, as I mentioned, very capable of producing some, uh, some sizable magnitudes and, uh, it's, it's kind of scary. You know, I, I definitely don't want to see any devastation down there, but it's, uh, good to be on guard. No fear mongering folks. You got to pay attention when they're swarming. You have to, you have to, you know, get the news out, get some videos out. That's what I've been doing the past couple days on this. Uh, and today, more recently, with all this activity in Southern California, it's just, it's something that you have to do. It's not fear-mongering. It's informational. Um, I suggest that you share this video out on the social media platforms, uh, what, whatever you use, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Um, get the information out there that the potential, and may, many, many people may not even know about this fault structure. You know, they may just think, well, the San Andreas Fault is... Uh, well, it's, uh, what, 50, 60 miles away, you know, it's, and there's no activity on it. We're just seeing a little bit of swarming on a, on a little fault structure, but it's capable, folks. You know, this area down here, uh, very capable of producing something a little bit on the bigger size. So just be on guard. Um, I will leave the link to this uh, interesting little article here. Uh, in the description below in this video so be on guard folks make sure you have an earthquake plan uh, of course as we have been all stocking up over the past year due to the uh, you know pandemic and pandemic and whatnot and make sure you got plenty of uh, you know necessity items always good to have water and uh, you know some canned foods and stuff like that just in case something does happen down there all right folks we're gonna jump off here again uh, monitor the uh, earthquake live 3d stream where the uh, latest quake on the globe is a three-pointer up in Alaska. They've been seeing quite the uptick in activity up here in the north as well. You can see that little cluster of quakes there. Uh, could be some something brewing there at that subduction area. 
uh, along the Pacific Plate there, kind of a little on the concerning side as well. We have not seen any significant movement once again to the west here on the Pacific side. Uh, so we're still looking at potential uh, further large-scale movement anywhere from Alaska down here to the south. It's just uh, kind of how it is, kind of bouncing back and forth there with the uh, plate tectonic pressure transfer. And uh, we're kind of still on target out here along the west coast and Alaska region. All right, folks, uh, we'll be out here monitoring. Uh, stay safe out there.